Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, Parallel Deku, back with another fanfiction. This is the movie of what a female Deku was in love with Bakugou. Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Chapter 1, Meeting Deku. Bakugou Katsuki was acting strange. There were no loud explosions, no yelling, and no cursing in 1A. It was beautiful silence. Everyone in 1A noticed this silence and were confused by it. Bakugou was silently listening to music at his desk and scrolling through his phone. Everyone shrugged and continued on their day in the blissful silence. Yui Academy is a private school for only the best. Only a certain amount of studies get in by the exams and the other half has special connections to get in. You're almost guaranteed to get a good job or go to a good college after graduating. Everyone is very lively in this private school and are certainly interesting. During lunch, Kirishima Jiro and Kaminari Denki questioned him on his sudden change of mood but he just shouted, fuck off, as he usually would. After school year Raka Achako and Tenya Ida were walking towards the gates to go home when they saw a girl frantically looking around outside the gates. No one without a Yui ID can enter the school. The security gates would immediately lock you outside. She seemed very nervous. She fidgeted around and held a picnic basket. She wore a uniform from a different school. Yui's uniform was a white dress shirt with a red tie, gray jacket, and black pants or skirt. She wore a black jacket with a white dress shirt and red bow to match her plaid skirt, black knee-high socks, and brown shoes. She had curly green hair that was put into a ponytail with her yellow, bunny hair ties. She had bright green eyes and a cute, baby face that had freckles on them. Achako went up to her and patted her shoulder. She immediately jumped and turned to her with wide eyes. Hey, you're not from this school, are you? Achako asked, very curious of who this girl was and why she was here. Eda stood next to her, curious as well of who this mysterious girl was. And no, I, I come a different school and near here. My b-boyfriend studies here and I'm surprising him with a pea picnic I made. She shuddered out with a blush that made her look more adorable. She glanced down at her picnic basket before looking back at Achako. Hey, that's so romantic. Achako squealed. That is very kind of you, miss. I am sure your boyfriend will appreciate your efforts. Eda complimented in his interesting way. The girl's blush turned scarlet at this. Why you think? I really hope he likes it. He usually cooks for me, so I would like to do something different for a change. She shyly responded with a fidget and twisting a lock of hair. What's your name? Achako asked. The girl's eyes widened before answering, Oh oh, I'm DKU. Why the fuck are you here? Bakugu yelled, still a few feet away from the gate with Kaminari and Kirishima with him. Deku yelped and dropped her basket as she whipped her head towards Bakugu. Kakun. She shuddered with a look of surprise on her face while Achako's and Ida's jaws dropped. Achako shakily asked, Why your boyfriend is B Bakugu? Deku turned to her and nodded with a blush on her face. Achako and Ida had a look of fear on their faces. This girl was probably being tortured by Bakugu or probably was his slave. They saw Bakugu stomp towards them and face Deku with a harsh glare. I thought you had a meeting today. He yelled at her face as she flinched. She started blushing after he said that and looked down at her shoes while twiddling her thumbs. I I lied. I wanted to surprise you today and we didn't get to see each other all last week and then she started shaking and tearing up. I am sorry I lied. I didn't mean to deceive you. I just wanted he cut her off with a hug. It's okay. I'm fucking happy you came today. Don't be such a crybaby. He assured her as he tightened his embrace and hid his red face in her hair. She also blushed but returned his hug. She then gave him a chaste kiss on Bakugu's cheek before burying herself into his chest. Achako turned to Ida and said, I never knew Bakugu could be like this. It's odd not seeing him angry or yelling. Ida wordlessly nodded as he continued to stare at the odd couple hugging. Kaminari and Kirishima got over the initial shock, but now had smirks on their faces. You never told us you had a girlfriend. Kaminari teased. Bakugu broke the hug and gave Kaminari a glare. With a scowl on his face, he growled, Let's get the fuck out of here, Deku. As he picked up the drop basket and pulled her towards the direction of the park. Have fun on your date. Tell me all about it tomorrow. Kirishima yelled. Kaminari laughed as he said, Bakugu is so going to kill you tomorrow. Kirishima shrugged as he and Kaminari walked towards their houses. As that happened, Bakugu kept pulling at Deku's hand with an angry blush on his face. Kei Kaken, you're hurting me. Deku whimpered out. He stopped walking and quickly released her sore hand. Deku looked down at her feet and said, I'm sorry for embarrassing you in front of your friends. His eyes softened at her apology and immediately tried to comfort her with a kiss on her forehead. Don't fucking worry about it, Izuku. You just wanted to fucking surprise me and I screwed it up. He somewhat apologized as he looked away from her. She smiled back at him. She's happy he apologized, even though it wasn't entirely his fault. She leaned towards him and hesitantly kissed him. She used his shoulder to balance herself as she stood on her toes. He was stunned for a few moments before encircling her waist while still holding the basket and kissing back a bit more firmly than her. They could have continued this but Izuku had other plans. She broke off the kiss and said, Let's go eat, Katsuki. She beamed at him. He responded by intertwining their hands and leading them to the park. Chapter 2, Texting Deku the next day was hell for Katsuki. Rumors spread like a forest fire and everyone in Wana surrounded him. 
Is she really your girlfriend? When did you two get together? What does she look like? What's her name? Bakugu finally had enough of this and slammed his hands down on his desk. All of you shut the fuck up. My fucking love life is none of your damn business. He stomped out of the classroom right when Aizawa sensei came into the room. The teacher didn't really care about their high school drama and just proceeded to give him an after school detention. Meanwhile, Bakugu cooled down in the boys' bathroom, sitting on a closed toilet. He muttered evil plans of killing his classmates when he heard a ding. He dipped his hands into the pocket and pulled out his phone. From Deku, you okay? You didn't respond to my last text. He smiled at the photo he set up for her. It was from the time they went to the beach together. She looked shyly into the camera but that just made her all the more adorable. He blushed at the memory and started texting his reply. To Deku, I'm fine. Stop worrying about every little shit. I'm just fucking pissed at the people in my class. Fuckers want to get into my business. He knows that text sounds really childish, despite the vulgar language, but he needs to vent a bit. He can't stand the people at school, but this is one of the best schools in Japan. He's gotta deal with it. From Deku, that's nothing to be angry about. They just want to get to know you better. If you opened up more, then they would know how amazing you are like I do. XOXO. He blushed at her text hugs and kisses. To Deku. Fine, I'll fucking try. BTW, you're texting in class. Naughty girl. He can already imagine her tomato red face. From Deku. Stop texting me and go back to class. Yep, she's scarlet. Bakugo smirked at his success of getting his girlfriend to blush even through texting. He slipped his phone into his pocket and walked out of the bathroom when the bell rung to signal the changing of subjects. During lunch, he sat with Kirishima and Kaminari. He kept glancing at his phone, waiting for a text from Deku that won't come. That girl yesterday was your girlfriend, right? Kirishima teased. Bakugo had to resist the urge to kill his friend. Everyone acts like him having a girlfriend is such a big deal. He's handsome. He can get any girl he wants. Yeah, she is. He replied in an annoyed tone. Kaminari grinned. She's really cute. When did you two meet? Bakugo sighed. Here come more questions. Our parents were good friends so when we were born, we would always play with each other. Kirishima smiled. That's a pretty long time. Probably the only way you would know a girl like that. Kaminari smirked. Bakugo glared at the blonde. Shut the fuck up. You're so fucking lucky I told you shit about her. Kaminari and Kirishima grinned at Bakugo. They continued 20 questions, more like 100, all during lunch until they had to get back to class. After the boring lessons were done, Bakugo had to suffer an after-school detention. Fuck Aizawa Sensei. Fuck those assholes in my class. Fuck. Kakun. That was one person he was very happy to see. I hope you're not still angry at your classmates. Izuku asked, worried she might, once again, be the victim of his anger. He sighed, frustrated at life, and laid his head on her shoulder. Izuku tensed up and started blushing at the close contact. Are you not feeling well? Did you feel hot? She nervously shuddered. He only responded by wrapping his arms around her waist, bringing her closer to his chest and sharing his warmth with her. Her blush started to become warmer than before. Her arms hung limp at her sides. She became incredibly nervous and the frequent thumps of her heart beating loudly against her chest wasn't helping. He then suddenly cupped her cheek and brought his lips down onto hers. Her heartbeat sped up and her mind turned blank. She couldn't fight him and slowly melted into the kiss. That's when he started getting braver with his actions. He brought his free hand lower and groped her. She yelped in his mouth but got a tongue invading hers. She squeezed her eyes shut and started pushing his tongue out, resulting in a French kiss. She soon let him dominate her mouth and let him explore everywhere. The couple started to run out of air and had to part for the needed oxygen. She then smacked his hand away from her skirt. What the fuck? I can't believe you. We're in front of your school and did it right in front of the security cameras. She yelled angrily, blushing from anger and embarrassment. He smirked and leaned his mouth close to her ear you didn't even resist, Izuku. He whispered in her ear, lightly blowing into it. She squeaked in reply and moved away from his hot breath, hiding her face on the other side of his neck. He quickly pecked a kiss on her forehead and started running towards the direction of their home. He evilly grinned and yelled, race you home, Deku. Oh yeah, your underwear's pink. He proceeded to run for his life, his heart lighter than a feather. She stood there stunned for a moment before her face exploded into scarlet red. K-A-C-C-H-A-M. Chapter 3, Morning with Deku. Morning with Deku. I had this idea for a while but someone's comment helped get this flowing. It was bright and beautiful morning. The birds were chirping, the sun was shining, and the silence was. B-A-K-U-G-O-U-K-A-T-S-U-K-I. How dare you do this in my house? Shut up, Heg. And I assent what you think it is. The piece was interrupted by Katsuki and his mother, Bakugu Mitsuki. Kakan, why are you yelling so early in the morning? Deku yawned. His situation was not looking any better. In his bed was Izuku Midoriya clad in his white shirt, hair tangled from last night. Her bottom half was covered by Katsuki's red blanket, but anyone can assume what's underneath. She has a dazed look on her face, rubbing her eyes to wake herself up. The first thing she sees is an angry Bakugu Mitsuki hovering over them. You fucking got her pregnant, didn't you? She screamed at her son. Izuku's face lit up like a bulb. I did not get her fucking pregnant. Katsuki yelled back. Izuku whimpered, Be Bakugu-san, please calm down. We did nothing even related to what you're suggesting. 
Mitsuki's anger started to dissipate when she saw the girl start to tear up. Katsuki caught on her fear and turned around to soothe it. D did I do something wrong? She asked, looking at Katsuki. His eyes widened. And no, of course not. It's my fault for not taking you home last night. He apologized. He then brought her into an embrace and rubbed small circles on her back. Mitsuki never saw this side of her son before. He's yelling or hitting her. He actually even hugged her. He never even hugs his own parents. I'm sorry for scaring you. I hope he didn't do anything rash last night. She glared at Katsuki, who sent a glare of his own back at her. She blushed at her, her sniffles being muffled by her boyfriend's shoulder. D don't worry. We were only studying. She assured the older Bakugo. Mitsuki couldn't tell if she was lying or not, but still left the room to go make them breakfast. They sighed in relief. They thought she was going to keep yelling at them. Izuku shivered. Can you shut the window? I'm a bit cold. Katsuki smirked. He pushed her shoulders down onto the bed and got on top of her, keeping her pinned to the bed. His hair fell to cover his eyes, creating a shadow over his face. Izuku yelled as she fell back. Her messy hair sprawled around her on his pillow. Surprise and confusion were written on her face. Let me warm you up then, Izuku. Before she could reply back, he leaned down to kiss her. She couldn't run away from the kiss. The more she struggled against him, the harder he kissed back. She had to eventually give in and kiss back. She even allowed his tongue to dance with hers. She was slowly losing air, but Katsuki won't allow her to break off the kiss. She brought her hands to his back and softly patted it to signal she wanted oxygen. He obediently pulled away from her lips. He grinned at her swollen lips and flushed face. She looked away from his gaze. I am feeling W warmer now. T thanks. She lied. His grin got even wider at her lie. I don't think you're warm enough. Katsuki smirked as he disconnected their joined hands and put his weight on top of her. Izuku gasped. Kaken. You're crushing me. She squirmed under his weight. You'll live he simply said as he started to plant kisses on her neck. Kisses turned into licks and licks turned into sucking. Yes stop. You'll leave a mark. Izuku whined. Let the whole fucking world see then. He sucked even harder at her skin. Her whole face was glowing red and only encouraged it by her moaning. He continued to suck until it bruised, soothing it by gentle licks. He was about to leave another hickey until. You two better not be fucking up there. Come down here for breakfast. Katsuki's mother yelled from the kitchen. They both blushed at their current position but didn't move an inch. Katsuki sighed as he pushed himself off Izuku. He was about to head downstairs but Izuku latched onto the back of his shirt. He turned towards her and smiled. Her eyes pleaded towards Kaken. He leaned forward and softly kissed her. She smiled into the kiss, immediately kissing back. He snaked his arms around her waist and she around his neck. She broke the kiss after a few minutes. Good morning, Kaken. She smiled. Good morning, Deku. He smiled back. He got up from the bed and stretched a bit, relieving his tense muscles. He then started walking towards the door to get breakfast. He had a smug look on his face for some odd reason. By the way, did your chest grow bigger? K-A-C-C-H-A-M. Chapter 4, Saving Deku. He has been waiting outside this school for too long. Bakugo leaned up against the gates, sighing as he played a game on his phone. He is currently battling a gym leader with his ferocious Charizard on Pokemon Go. He won't admit it but he is a Pokemon geek. He will just yell very loudly and avoid the question. He is a geek at heart. Since he has been friends with Deku for years, he was eventually swept up by her geek habits. First it was Pokemon then Marvel then anime. He's been through it all, but gets fun entertainment and lots of kissing in the end. He smiled at the remembrance of his childhood with Deku. She always looked geeky ever since they were young, just an adorable geek that happens to be currently dating him. He wouldn't change that for anything. They've been together for so long, it was just a matter of time and sucking down his continuously growing ego to confess to her. He was a shaky, quivering tomato when he confessed to her. Luckily, she only cried and said yes while still looking like a damn model. How did they ever end up together? He glanced down at his phone, checking the current time. It was already an hour after dismissal. She never takes this long, only taking 30 minutes to finish up her shit before joining him. She is always full of energy when it comes to school. She was so eager and excited about the student council that she talked all night about it on the phone with him. Talks a mile a minute but still gets tongue-tied after they make out. He started to get a bit anxious. Something could be happening inside that building and he was just outside of it, being too fucking oblivious. Bad thoughts and scenarios started running through his brain. He is a bit paranoid when it comes to his girlfriend. Fuck this school. I hope I don't have to enter it ever again. He muttered to himself as he walked past the gates and into the building. He wandered through the halls to see which one was the student council. A lot of people stayed after today. Most of them took one glance at him and started a whisper chain throughout the hallways. He came right from Yui and didn't bother to change out of his uniform. Yui Academy is the most well-known school in Japan. People have done interviews and reports about it. Too famous for its own good. Being surrounded by the press and cameras wasn't the ideal first day. He decided to give up on finding the student council and went upstairs towards her classroom. This hallway had less students and was a bit quiet. He could still hear the chatter from downstairs. He was almost to her classroom when he heard, Please stop, I'm just trying to go home. His feet stopped walking. He knows that sweet, angelic voice. What's wrong, babe? You don't want to have fun with us. Of course not. His nose flared in anger, a growl rumbled in his chest. 
Some little shit was trying to hit on his girlfriend. He ran towards her classroom and slammed open the door. Two faces turned in direction, surprised by his appearance, but he only cared about one face, Izuku Midoriya. Her face changed from surprise to relief, but her attacker's face looked at him, curiously, and a bit irritated. Bakugou's anger rose when he saw the guy hold Izuku's wrist. You bastard. Bakugou yelled at him. He flinched at the intensity of his voice, but then straightened up and sent a glare at him, trying to seem intimidating. He looked like a brat who got his candy stolen. Bakugou sent a glare back, wishing he could incinerate him while Izuku sighed at the predicament. This seemed so one-sided. It was obvious who was going to be victorious in the end. Who are you supposed to be? The unknown male snapped at Bakugou. I am her boyfriend and if you fucking think you can touch her then you're fucking wrong. He ripped the guy's hand off her wrist and protectively wrapped his arms around her waist. He even snarled at him to emphasize his point. The poor guy was shaking, fear overcame his whole body and he looked like he wanted to sob. He started running out of the classroom, probably to the bathroom because he looked like he almost peed his pants. Bakugou had a triumphant smirk on his face after. Izuku turned around in his arms and glared, irritated but relieved at the results. They stared at each other for a bit, trying to communicate telepathically. That wasn't very nice of you. She voiced her silent message. I don't give a shit. He was trying to steal you away from me. He growled possessively as he tightened his grip on her. She winced at the pressure but still smiled at him. Why are you worrying about that? I love you and only you. He isn't going to take me away from you. She reassured him. He blushed at this but brought her closer to his chest to hide it. She giggled at this, knowing what he was trying to do, but just returned the hug. She is glad he came. She did not want to be taken away from him. They have been through so much that it would break her heart to end it now. She looked up at him, I want to go home now. Bake me cookies. She pleaded with baby doll eyes. His heart melted at her request. He can't deny her if she asks like that. He wanted to protect his precious girlfriend from the world. He pecked her on the forehead, of course. I just need some ingredients. Let's buy some now. He grabbed her bag, carrying it along with his and extended his palm towards her. She appreciated the gesture but instead wrapped her arms around his unoccupied arm, leaning her head on his shoulder. He didn't resist her warmth and walked out with her clinging to his arm. Chapter 5, Jealous Deku Deku was once again outside Yui Academy's gates. The student council cancelled their meeting so now she can wait outside for Katsuki's classes to end. They probably cancelled their meeting because of the incident yesterday. Izuku had to profusely apologize in order to not get kicked out the student council. The student reported Katsuki to the school board and said he attacked him, which her boyfriend did not. They both had no evidence to support their case and the student had no injuries to prove he did get beat up so they both got off lightly. Deku also had to get the student counsel to not attack the student who tried to flirt with her. They are very protective of her and her innocence. There would be chaos if she was not there and let them go loose. The student counsel also was about to abuse their power of authority to hurt another student. Deku couldn't stand by and watch that. It would not feel right to her. Back you go. We did amazing today. We really beat Class B. A girl cheered to the blonde. Deku whipped her head towards the voice who mentioned her boyfriend. She saw her boyfriend in the middle of some friends from 1A. She recognized the redhead with spiky hair and the blonde with the black stripe. She didn't recognize the black-haired boy next to Katsuki or the pinkette with tan skin next to the stranger. We only fucking beat them because of my badass skills. Katsuki bragged at the tan girl. Everyone, even Deku, rolled their eyes at this. We almost won. It was a great game. Hiroshima complimented. We won because of my awesome skills. The girl argued. Hell no. He laughed at her exaggerated reasoning, as if it was a joke. The group joined in while the pink head pouted at them. The redhead boy, Deku remembers as Kirishima, swung his arm around Katsuki. Deku frowned. Her boyfriend was actually laughing at his classmate's comment. Last night he was complaining and ranting about how annoying they were. She knew that on the inside he actually does like his classmates and has fun with them. She knew but seeing him talk to a female classmate is a different story. He has not mentioned of being interested in any of them. Well, he would not even dare to mention other girls in front of Izuku. No need to make Izuku more paranoid than she already is. Once the group got close to the gates, Katsuki finally looked away from his friends to see Izuku standing there, slightly frowning at him. What the fuck, Deku? I thought you were still at your fucking school. Katsuki asked, surprised at her appearance at his school. She frowned more at this and answered gloomily, I wanted to go home with you. Katsuki knew something was off with her. He will figure it out and not in front of these losers. I'm gonna fucking leave. Can't stand being around fucking nobodies like you shitheads. He loudly announced as he grabbed Deku's hand and started briskly walking away from his school. His friends looked confused and skeptical of this but slowly waved goodbye. Hand in hand, they silently walked home. Their houses is really far from the school but they could catch a bus or the train. Katsuki was just waiting for Deku to go spill whatever she had on her mind. Forcing her to talk would make her more upset. Would you ever cheat on me? She blurted out. She hoped the answer would be no. What the hell? Why the fuck would I ever do that? I hate those shitty wannabes. He frowned, squeezing her hand and rubbing circles on her knuckles, soothing her nerves. She felt a bit assured but was still curious. Why were you and that girl close then? You were laughing and having fun. She pouted. 
He glared at her. Stop fucking doubting me. I am not going to find another one. You are the only one who fucking deserves to be with an awesome person like me. Those shitty fuckers in my class aren't as fucking amazing as you are. He blushed harshly as he roughly said all this. Deku blushed too but smiled at his honesty. Is this where I get a ring and you ask me to marry you? She teased. His blush got darker and turned away from her, dragging her to the bus stop while she was giggling at how cute he was. Chapter 6, Valentine from Deku. Katsuki Bakugou hates Valentine's Day. He's so bitter on Valentine's Day. It's a day for cavities and depression. He hates the color pink and hates flowers. In the past he used to do this routine where any gift he got on Valentine's Day, he would burn them in his backyard. Stupid Deku kept getting him chocolate even though he did that. Even though he has a girlfriend now to shower with hugs and love, he still hates Valentine's Day. Puts so much pressure on him to get a gift back on White Day. Okay, maybe he is hiding his nervousness with all this bitterness and anger but he can't help it. If his girlfriend gets the best gift ever then he has got to get one too. He loves her to death but her standards for gifts have risen. She isn't demanding or anything but she will hide her displeasure with a fake smile and that would just kill him on the inside. Hopefully she has not gone overboard this year. Last year was the best ever but all that work for White Day was exhausting. He had school but he still ran around getting everything prepared for her. Today is Valentine's Day and he is nervous for what's to come. The bell rung to end the school day but he did not want to get out of his seat. Baku bro, what are you still doing sitting? The bell rang and it's time to go. Hiroshima curiously asked as he got up to go home. Fucking shut it. I'm going. I'm going. Katsuki yelled as he got up and raced out of the classroom without him. He didn't want to face her yet. He wasn't mentally prepared for whatever she had planned today. When he walked outside, he already spotted her fluffy, green hair bouncing around outside the gates. Okay, he can do this. He won't screw up anything up for her. This is for her. This is for her. He slowly walked towards her and as he approached she spotted him, her eyes sparkling at the sight of him as if he was the rarest jewel in the treasure box. Kakan. Kakan. Happy Valentine's Day. She yelled once he got outside the gates. She raced up to him and jumped into his arms excitedly, wrapping her arms around his neck and hugging him tightly. Not good. She's excited and happy, more PDA than usual. She has something special up her sleeves. He had to drop his handbag to catch her because unlike Izuku with her cute yellow backpack, he has to carry his bag around. He noticed she dropped something too but just kept hugging her to make sure she's happy. I'm so excited for today. I have so much planned and there is so little time. We gotta get home and change and then I gotta. She kept rambling on and on but he couldn't keep up with her speed. He silenced her yapping with a small peck on the lips that made her face blow up in a red hue. She stopped speaking and hugging but laced their fingers together to lead them home. They went their separate ways to go home and change for the special occasion. He decided on casual dressy. He still sagged his black jeans but they looked fucking hot on him and he knew she liked them too. He wore a red button down, keeping a few buttons loose on the collar, along with his favorite black leather jacket. He just wore his red sneakers with them because he had no other shoes. He combed his hair a bit to keep it tame but it ultimately did not work because of how messy it is. After freshening himself up, he locked the house and went to hers next door to his. He knocked one on the door and waited for a few minutes. Just then there were a few crashes and he even heard something break. He could hear his girlfriend muttering and cursing a bit which made him smile. Finally, the door opened and he was greeted with a disheveled Izuku. She wore something entirely different from her usual outfits. Most of it was covered by a stained pink apron but she wore a yellow sundress with white knee-high socks. Her long green hair was down and curlier than usual, framing that adorable face of hers and making her seem so much younger. Kei Kekun, I was going to call you to let you know one but you came early. A few things aren't ready yet but you can come in. She hurriedly said as she opened the door wider for him. Katsuki grinned and walked right in. Just then the fire alarm started blaring off. Cursing, Deku quickly sprinted towards the kitchen and pulled out something from the oven. It's burnt now, she mourned. Katsuki started opening the windows to get rid of the smell and ran over to help her. I'm really sorry, it wasn't supposed to look like this. She apologized, showing him the black chicken she tried to cook. He laughed at her failed attempt but grabbed a fork and picked up a piece of it to put into his mouth. Actually doesn't taste that shitty, at least you didn't burn the rest of the food. He joked as he pointed to the table where there were other various foods she probably prepared. Thanks Kekin, I love you. She sniffed as she went up to hug him again the second time of the day. You can just make it up to me tonight when I stay over. He smirked as he stole her breath away with one single kiss. He really doesn't need her to prepare fancy shit or to dress up. They don't need to do some Valentine's Day cliché shit from the sappy movies. He just wants her all to himself. Chapter 7, Deku's House This is Suwa boring. Katsuki groaned as he plopped back down on his girlfriend's twin-size bed. Her bedroom is filled with so much nerdy stuff. Coming in her room is like walking through a museum, so many wonders everywhere from every corner to the ceiling. She has items from every fangirl stage she's been in from superheroes to Pokemon to currently anime. Then raving over some anime about brats trying to become superheroes at a superhero school. Pretty stupid in his opinion but the villains and cool fights make up for that lame plot. Whenever a new episode comes out, she calls him in the middle of the night to fangirl over it and then invite him over to watch it with her. 
he would go to her house half awake and fall asleep halfway through so she would make him rewatch it in the morning. He heard the door creak open. I brought the snacks. Which did you want again? She asked as she held the white tray in front of him. Hand me the fucking spiciest. He demanded as he waved his hands around like a child. She rolled her eyes but a playful smile was on her face as she threw a bag of chips at his face. His face lit up momentarily before going back to his usual grumpy face, which she knew was fake because he's always happy to receive spicy food. We still have to do homework. You can't keep sleeping on my bed, munching on my food. She scolded and gestured towards the pile of books on the side of the table. He rolled his eyes at her and kept shoving chips into his mouth, spreading crumbs onto his girlfriend's bed. Stop making a mess on my bed and come help me with this problem. She ordered as she reopened the book from before she went to get the snacks. Why is it always math that you have problems with? You're supposed to be the shitty nerd, not me. He complained but got up and sat right next to her. For the next hour they both helped each other with homework. Katsuki excelled in math and science but was horrible at English and history. Izuku is the opposite of him and did well in both English and history. He could have invited those failing losers in his class but he never would invite them anywhere with him, especially near his girlfriend. Katsuki doesn't need his classmates putting their dirty hands on her. Izuku probably would have invited them herself if she knew they were failing. She's just kind like that but he heard the rich girl in his class offered to tutor them. Now that he thought about it, that girl and Izuku would get along well considering how alike they are, but he wouldn't let any of his classmates meet her again. Kaken, thank you so much. You've been so helpful today. She complimented as she put her books away. An idea suddenly popped in his head. Then do I get a reward from you? He purred into her ear. Her face flushed brightly at this but he could see consideration in her eyes. I, I guess. What would you even want? She questioned. He smirked at her innocent, little question. He grabbed her hips and launched them both onto her bed, his back against the wall and... Your body of course. He swiftly leaned down to kiss her before she could verbally respond. She submitted to his request and wholly gave him what always was his. She ran her fingers up from his abs to his muscular chest, scrunching up his tank top there. His tank top was very thin and showed everything but covered too much. She could feel his hands wandering down from her hips but was too into the moment to care. Too bad she chose a skirt that day and his hands were under it, pulling down her underwear. A rush of realization suddenly hit her and she stopped kissing him. What time is it? She asked Kakan. He gave her a harsh glare but looked at the clock in her room. It's fucking 18. Why the hell do you want to know? They heard a distant door open and keys jingling. Izuku, I'm home. Are you and Katsuki-kun hungry? They bolted right up from the bed. Izuku pulled back up her panties while Katsuki straightened out his shirt. What the hell am I supposed to do about this? He angrily whispered. Just hide it with my blanket. She whispered back as she straightened her tank top too. They opened the books again and sat on the floor, Kakin covering his lower half with her All Might blanket. Deku's door creaked open as her mom came into the room. Izuku, Katsuki, you two didn't answer when I called. Are you okay? She asked worriedly. Sorry mom. We had our headphones in, studying for the big midterms. She nervously lied as she dramatically waved her phone around. Katsuki rolled his eyes at her horrible lying and smoothly said. Sorry that we didn't hear you, auntie. Do you need help with dinner? Oh no. You two go back to studying. I will even invite your parents over. She suggested as she closed the door. They flopped down in relief. Izuku closes the book and lays down on the ground. We're never doing this again. My mom will kill us if she found out what we did. She groans as she hides her blushing face into her arms. Your mom totally just cock-blocked us. He stated with an angry glare at the door. K-A-C-C-H-A-N. Don't say it like that. Her face reddens more at his blunt saying at her mom. Izuku-chan. Katsuki-kun's parents are here. Come greet them. Damn, the other cock-blocks are here too. Kakan. Chapter 8, Deku in the Mall. Announcements are in the end so feel free to skip those if you want. Todoroki Shadow was really bored. He loved his girlfriend and all but a day in the mall isn't what he planned for today. He watched as his girlfriend Yeyurazu Momo went rack to rack trying to find clothes but she had a whole closet of clothes. Shadow never understood why she wanted to shop when she had perfectly good clothes in her closet or for his every opinion on each outfit she chooses. He asked her once and she brushed it off as something every woman should do. That confuses him more than answers his question. Are you going to be okay here by yourself for a bit? I need to go to the bathroom. Shouto asked before standing up. She hummed to him. Of course, Shouto. Please don't be long, I'm getting thirsty from all the walking. Then she went back to viewing all her options. He nodded to her even though she wasn't looking his way anymore and walked in the direction of the bathroom. Midway through he stopped. In the window was a charm bracelet that a lot of the girls been fussing over. It was a simple one decorated with hearts and kanji to spell out a name. Her birthday was coming up and he had no clue what to do for it until now. You know she will like anything he gives. She keeps, even treasures, all the gifts he has given over the years. He doesn't give gifts often but when he does, it's for a special occasion. Usually he gives them on Christmas and her birthday only. They were dating for two years now and it's been the best. Todoroki was about to walk inside when he noticed a pretty cozy couple inside the shop. Ah, it was his loud, annoying classmate and the talk of the class, the newest couple everyone recently discovered and been eating up. Of course out of school, they are dressed very casually. 
He wears ripped jeans and some type of anime tee that his girlfriend probably forced him to wear while she wears the same shirt and joggers a few sizes too big for her stature. He looks bored out of mind looking at the jewelry while her eyes sparkle like the ones in the case, looking at all of them. Her arms gripping his bicep which looks very painful and he notices it's paler than his other but the boyfriend doesn't seem to mind at all. The blonde turns his head slightly and unfortunately catches Shadow's eye. The sneer sent his way isn't very welcoming. The girl notices his tension and turns around to see where he's looking at. Ah crap, she spotted him. She's waving at him and dragging the dead weight of her soulmate over to him. You must be Todoroki-san. Kaken talks all about you. I'm Midori Izuku. She rambles on after that, similar to a yapping dog. It takes him a full minute to realize that he has to respond like a normal person. Nice to meet you Midori-san. Doing well today. He asks. Bakugu glares at him and is clearly trying to telepathically message him that he made a grave mistake. We're doing well. Kaken decided we needed some fresh air so we headed to this mall. It's such a lovely day. What are you doing here? He immediately regrets continuing this conversation. He now wants this conversation to end and go back to his own girlfriend's indecisive shopping. I am looking for a present for Yeirazu's birthday coming up. He reluctantly gives up. Really? That's so adorable, right Kaken? The blonde just nods along, obviously zoning them out for the sake of his sanity. What present do you want to get her? I was thinking of a charm bracelet. That's something girls think are appropriate correct. But this girl has some kind of charm to her that makes him keep continuing this conversation. Actually it is. Lots of people at my school are showing off those bracelets. I'm sure Yeirazu-san will appreciate. That's very helpful. Thank you, Midoriya-san. You're welcome. Don't be afraid to ask us. Back you go too. Yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Actually now that I think about it, did you come here with someone? I don't see anyone with you right now. Yes, I am. I'm with Yeirazu today and I think she's looking for me so I must be leaving. He tries to escape and it succeeds. Bakugou's face converts to one of relief. Really? I wish we talked more so I can hear about Yui but I hope we see each other again. Note to future self, do not go to this mall again. Izuku's eyes blearily opened. She saw the TV still on, playing a rerun of Pokemon. Her head laid on the pillow on the couch. She recognized the living room as her boyfriend's. The neurons in her brain did not compute anything other than that. She's still trying to figure out why she was here. Her mind slowly pieced together her memories of what happened before the current situation. She now remembered what happened. She was staying over at her boyfriend's place for the weekend after school. His parents are away for the night so it is just her and Katsuki. His parents don't trust him to stay with her but she managed to convince them that she will be home early and that they will not do anything. Well, what they don't know will not hurt them. She blushed as she buried her face into the pillow and recollected on the events that took place only a few hours ago. Ignorance is bliss and she hopes they didn't leave any evidence. It's already embarrassing enough for your boyfriend's mom to call you to go pick up your clothes left in her son's room. She never wants another humiliating experience like that again. Thank goodness they did not do anything too extreme. They decided to end the night with a few seasons of Pokemon. Season 1 of course because season 22 sucks and she will fight you on that fact. She remembered the episode of Ash leaving Pikachu before she fell asleep, which she's mad about because that is the greatest episode of season 1 and is the saddest episode. She will go on Twitter and fight everyone who disagrees, with please and thank yous of course. There are very fuzzy in-between activities that they will never share to another living soul but Izuku's heart warms at how intimate it was. She then smells something. It's sweet but very comforting. It reminds her of a lazy morning where she would have nothing to do all day. There's also a maple smell that goes with it. Her mouth is already watering at the recognition. It's pancakes. Her mouth waters at the thought of them. She's already uncovering herself and walking towards the kitchen before she even registers the action. It's a very domestic setting. Katsuki making pancakes at late at night while listening to very quiet music that she was not able to hear before. She could hear his light humming and him drumming his hands on the spatula he's using to flip the pancakes. Too bad he's not wearing an apron and it would have been more complete. She dopely smiled at this scene and immediately needed to do something to quench the fire in her heart. She went up behind him and wrapped her arms around his waist. He seized up at the moment of contact between them, which kind of hurt, then melted into goo when he realizes it's just her. Hey babe, you finally woke up. I made you dinner. I wish I woke up sooner. I missed out on all the fun. She pouted. Go back to sleep. I'll bring it to you. Katsuki tried to coax her, but she only pouted more and shook her head. I want to stay with you. It's so cold. Katsuki sighed and turned off the stove. Do you want some hot chocolate to go with your pancakes? She shook her head at first but then she immediately regretted it. She wants something to warm her up and something sweet. It must have shown on her face because he went to the fridge and got out the carton of milk to pour into a mug. He popped it into the microwave and they waited in peaceful silence. A few minutes later the microwave rang and her boyfriend took it out without even being phased of how hot it is. He went to a cabinet and took out a bar of chocolate to put into her milk to melt and mix with it. He even greedily popped one into his mouth. He gave her the cup while he went over to finish the pancakes. Soon, there was a high stack of pancakes drenched in syrup for her to enjoy. She immediately dug into it with vigor. Got him, you act like I don't feed you every single day. He joked, which is rare for the great Katsuki Bakugou. 
because you leave me to fend for myself and to eat school food. I fired back. Better be grateful their shitty food is decent and that your mom is such a great cook. Hey, don't bring my mom into this. I love her cooking. She laughed while playfully shoving him. What a mistake that became. He wrapped his arms around her and started tickling her sides. She's so weak against him. She started giggling, clutching her sides, trying to protect them from the evil hands that kept attacking them. Kakan, stop. I'm sorry. Suffer the consequences, Deku. Nuu. She managed to escape his tickle and ran towards the living room, hiding behind the couch. Okay, okay. I'll stop. It's already late enough and we'll be tired in the morning. He resigned, going back into the kitchen to warm up the hot chocolate. She sighed in relief and collapsed on the couch and waited for her hot chocolate to come out the microwave. Do you want to continue watching Pokemon or do you want to find something else? The microwave rang. Let's watch something else. Want to watch some new anime? I've heard the rising of the shield hero is a really good one. He suggested as he gave Izuku her hot chocolate and sat down next to her. Hey, that sounds awesome. She squealed as she cuddled up right next to him. He softly smiled at her and laid a kiss on her forehead. Please don't drool too much on me. She pouted at this statement. Kakan, I'm scared. I don't want to do this. Izuku whimpered. It will be okay, stupid Deku. Just let me push you. Katsuki smirked towards his girlfriend. No way. He pushed too hard. She protested and threw her hands up in frustration. I will be right behind you. You're okay. Izuku gulped as she resigned to her fate. Katsuki manically grinned at her defeat and forcibly shoved the sled down the high hill. He jumped in behind her and whooped. Izuku screamed while covering her eyes. She thought this was a bad idea since the beginning. She never wanted to do this. She just wanted to stay home and watch cheesy movies with her boyfriend. She felt her stomach drop and the wind roar against her ears. The sled was going down the snowy hill as fast as a roller coaster. She felt queasy. Katsuki meanwhile was having the time of his life. This was just like an amusement park. He felt high from the adrenaline, the rush making him giddy. Just then, Katsuki saw something in the distance, a tree in their pathway. His heart started racing as he was panicking. Oh god, they were gonna crash. He jumped out of the sled and landed in the fluffy snow. Izuku heard a thud and immediately opened her eyes. She turned around and saw Katsuki trying to frantically run to her. She faced towards the head of the sled and saw a huge tree coming closer towards her. She tensed up at the sight of it, her body frozen in fear. She then collided with something and fell into the snow, the sled cracking upon impact with the tree. She blinked to clear up her vision and saw Katsuki hovering over her, holding himself up only by his hands. She thought he looked almost celestial with his hair glittering under the sun and his hair framing his face so perfectly. She realized his mouth was moving. Deku. Hey Deku. Are you okay? Are you an angel or just my boyfriend? He blushed at that and shoved snow in her face. You're fine. Let's go get the sled and go home. I want hot chocolate. She laughed and wiped the snow off her face. She rushed up to him and intertwined their hands together, excited at the thought of more cuddles with her cute boyfriend. Kachin, I'm so cold. Izuku whined from her upside-down position on her boyfriend's bed. Her hair swept the floor as she twisted her head to look at him. Then go borrow something from my closet. I don't fucking care. He replied as he kept doing his homework on his laptop. Izuku pouted at the lack of attention she was getting. She slid off the couch and went towards the closet. She opened to reveal a very organized closet with neatly folded clothes and crisply pressed shirts. She always known he liked being clean and organized. She did too but this was so excessive. He color-coded his clothes too. She rummaged through but couldn't find anything. She decided to go to his drawer and look for something. It wasn't anything too special. It was pajamas and socks. In the back of the drawer though, she found an old sweatshirt. It was an All Might sweatshirt too. She didn't even know he still kept any of it. She grinned and turned around to her boyfriend. Kao Achen, what is this? He looked up from his homework and saw what she was wearing a long sweatshirt with All Might's face on it. His eyes widened and his face started to heat up. Look, that shitty old thing was from a long time ago. I just forgot to get rid of it okay. She giggled at his denial and just snuggled into the baggy sweatshirt. If you like it so much then just keep the shitty thing. I don't need it anymore. Thank you so much Kachin. I will be sure to treasure this. She giggled at his futile attempts while he went back to his homework with red cheeks. Chapter 12, Deku's Tree The holidays are near and the two certain families in the same neighborhood decided to get together to decorate a tree. Pachin, tinsel belongs on the trees. But I am decorating a tree. A really pretty tree. Deku blushes. She glances around and sees all three adults stare at the two of them. She hides her face away from Katsuki's hands and into the box of ornaments his parents left out. Her mother giggles as she keeps on sewing together popcorn and dried fruit. Katsuki's parents continue on hanging more ornaments on the tree as the couple keeps chasing one another. Get back here, shitty Deku. I want to see if this star lights up on your head. Nuo, my hair might catch on fire if you come any closer. I'll go bald. I'll still love you bald. That catches her off guard. She skids to a stop, but ends up slipping on the wooden floor. Katsuki notices this and reaches out to catch her. Both of them end up falling on the floor and he manages to land on his ass. Fuak, that's gonna bruise. Kachin, are you alright? Do we need to get you the hospital? Mom, as she's about to get up to get her phone, Katsuki pulls her back down and hugs her. 
it's not that bad geez, but he smothers his face into her neck, causing her to squeak and turn brighter red. As he's about to leave a hickey on her neck, his mom comes by and hits him on the head. Get a hold of yourself. There are adults in this room. What the hell, old hag? I wasn't going to do anything. Save it for later. Deku laughs at the parent and son going at it. This might be a great Christmas. Chapter 13, Protective Deku. Protective Deku. Izuku Midoriya just finished her student council duties when she started getting a chill down her back. Something was severely wrong. She bid her peers goodbye and started rushing to get out. Katsuki was waiting outside as usual and she didn't want to keep him waiting while this icky feeling was still haunting her. Once she got her regular shoes on, she started jogging to where Katsuki usually stands. What she saw is not something she wanted to ever see again. Your bitch got me in trouble and it's now on my record. It's not my fault dipshit and you don't get to call her a bitch. Bakugou was dodging the guy as he was throwing spineless punches. His cocky attitude was showing and he was yawning as the attacker kept punching. Stop dodging and fight me like a man. You're hardly a man. You're the little bitch here if anything. Izuku was glad he's not hurt, but she's more concerned whether an adult will come and see this. She doesn't want Katsuki or her to get in trouble. She went to intervene, but saw something in the corner of her eye. There was another guy and he was approaching Katsuki with something shiny. She recognized that guy. He was the one who tried to make her his girlfriend. He kept getting closer and she recognized the shiny object as a blade. Kakan's going to get hurt. K-A-C-C-H-A-N no. Just as Bakugou caught a punch and restrained the guy, the other one swung with the blunt knife. Izuku ran towards her beloved and covered him with her own body. D-A-K-U. She felt sharp pain somewhere, but focused on disarming the guy by slamming her bag on his arm. The pain increased and she heard the clatter of the knife. The guy yelped like a child and backed off. She saw the bloody knife on the ground and knew this was her chance. She will not let this boy hurt her kakin and get away unscathed. She dropped the bag she was holding and swung her arm as hard as she could. She managed to hand a hard hit on the corner of his eye and he fell like a rag doll. Pathetic. Her arm started stinging after that one, but he deserved it. She turned around and saw Katsuki cop at her, knocking the first guy unconscious. He went to the other guy and gave him a violent kick on the other side of his face. He won't be looking the same for a while. Fuck you and your mom. She should have raised you better. Izuku was happy he wasn't hurt at all since he's got so much energy. Katsuki turned to her and hugged her, rubbing her back. Fuck, I'm so glad you're okay. Let me handle the knives from now on. You're fucking useless with them anyways, Deku. She smiled at this and hugged him back. She did suck at cooking anyway. Once the adrenaline in her veins cooled down, she started to feel the throbbing in her leg. Furious, she looked down at her leg and saw her stockings bright red. Above the white stocking was a huge gash. Because of her improperly disarming the guy, she managed to make the gash zigzag in pretty deep. The gaping hole taunted her and she started to feel lightheaded, her mind blanking. Izuku always hated blood coming out of her. Katsuki stopped hugging her at this point and went to pick up her bag. He then noticed the knife was red. Knives usually aren't dripping red. Shit, Izuku. Where the hell did he cut you? He started scanning her body and saw the large cut on her thigh. A little bit of her skirt got cut so the gash could be farther up. He noticed her hyperventilating and her eyes glazed over. Fuck, 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 fuck. I'm going to carry you to the hospital right now. Is it all right? At this point, her breathing was getting painful and tears were welling up in her eyes from the pain of just living and getting nicked. She nodded and felt herself get carried. From the lack of oxygen she was receiving, she blacked out for a bit. This series was supposed to be slice of life and really had no plot, now it does. This shall be my last arc before I get away from it. It was fun when I was young, but I lost myself, I didn't watch BNHA in forever. I didn't like writing anymore. I couldn't bear to get back on this series and write when I had no inspiration. Things are different now. I hate leaving things unfinished now and been finishing all my series with a bang. I mostly stay on YouTube, but neglected this account for too long. It's time for a new change, new routine. I barely stream, but when I do, I play Poke Legends Ericus, Poke Unite, Sky Coddle, Akn, and Minecraft. I really want to stream more and be interactive with more people. Would love to meet everyone again and reconnect. Bakugou was munching on some Ahamaki rolls while finishing his homework. Miss Midoriya had come back with them after realizing he hadn't eaten dinner. She was currently across from him and was peeling oranges for him to eat. One hand was eating it and another hand was on his laptop keyboard, typing up an essay he hadn't done since his girlfriend got sent to this hospital. He was still in his uniform for God's sake. How was he supposed to focus on this when his girlfriend fainted at the sight of blood and had to get stitches for the gash on her leg? The memory started to replay in his head as he remembered focusing on knocking out the other guy and not noticing there was a second one with a weapon hiding someplace. He wished he wasn't so weak. She wasn't supposed to get hurt and get stitches. She wasn't supposed to be there when he was just teasing the loser as he was no threat at all. He wished he had seen that guy and reacted fast enough to make sure no one got hurt. He started to hear groaning and jolted out of his seat. Izuku was waking up. Auntie, Izuku is waking up. Really? Oh my baby. She set down the oranges she had already peeled and observed how her daughter started to gain consciousness again, crocodile tears starting to fall down her face before Izuku even woke. Mom, Kekin, why am I here? 
Izuku asked, dazed and probably drugged out of her mind since she resisted the doctors when she was admitted. Baby, you got hurt at school and Katsuki brought you here. I'm so grateful you're alive. Here, where's here? Izuku's breathing started shortening and she shot up straight before laying back down whining as the pain in her leg reminded her of what happened. Izuku, you got stabbed by that fucking bastard. Do you need anything? Katsuki asked, worried about Izuku. No, I'm alright. What happened to the two guys? I called the school and immediately made sure they were dealt with. You were hurt. My baby girl was injured at school. And Ko started bawling at this point and Izuku teared up at the sight of her mom crying when she's the one in the bed. Thank you for worrying, mom, Kaken. I, I knew going to that school was a bad idea. I, I wish I had sent you to a be better school. You're so smart and talented. It's such a waste to be at that school. I immediately pulled you out of that school. You took me out of school. Where am I supposed to go now? Izuku's heart started rapidly beating and fidgeting her fingers around. I agree. That's why you're going to be going to the same school as Katsuki. Katsuki's parents were standing right by the door and completely dominated the previous dreary atmosphere before. Well, Mitsuki mostly did it. Her husband was carrying a jug in a small plastic bag. What are you doing here, old hag? Katsuki screamed as he pointed at his mom. More shocked that his parents had the time to visit than the fact that his girlfriend will be attending the same academy as him. I'm here supporting my niece and best friend, useless son of mine. You see OULDN even prevent this. Now, now, settle down hon. Izuku and Katsuki already had a long day as it is. I'll pour us some tea we brought. Masaru soothed his wife and set her down on a chair as he went by a small table and prepared the cups. That stung young Bakugou though. He's been too weak lately and taking everything for granted. Don't worry Inko. We've already paid the medical bills and we'll help Izuku in any way we can with the transfer. Handy, that's too much. Mom and I could never accept something as gracious as that. Izuku bowed and waved her hands around. Nonsense sweetie, I'm just happy my rude son got such a nice girlfriend. He would have been kicked out long ago if he hadn't met you. Not true hag. Sit down K-A-T-S-U-K-I. The adults are talking. Katsuki, Mitsuki we're going to get kicked out if you two keep shouting. Here's some tea. Katsuki's father handed everyone a cup of green tea. Anyways before my dumbass offspring interrupted me, I was saying how I will help you pay for school. Me and my husband see you as our own daughter and just want the best for you. After this incident, you have definitely proven that you deserve to be at our son's side. Do you want to go to Yui Academy with Katsuki or go to a different school? Yui Academy is one of the best schools in the country. It would be a waste to say no. The most famous leaders in Japan went to Yui. Yeah, I want to go to school with Kaken. Izuku started bawling at this point like her mom and went to hug her to cry on her chest. Katsuki was happy for her, but he feels that his school life is about to not be so peaceful. I'm bored. That's what happens when you get into the hospital, shitty Deku. Katsuki grumbled as he cut apples their parents left for them. He handed her a fork and she automatically took it to eat the apples off the plate. They were shaped into bunnies, Izuku's favorite animals. I don't remember you being able to cut apples like this. She mentioned, her mouth full of apples. I usually don't have to cut apples for fucking sick people. Treat me nicer. I'm the one in the hospital bed. She popped another apple bunny into her mouth. No, because you did the most reckless thing ever. I'm sorry Kaken. Deku stopped munching on the apples and started to tear up remembering how she could have died. It happened and now we have to move past it. Here, eat these. He handed her another plate of apples and it was now shaped into a swan. I really didn't want you to get hurt. I thought all those boys at school wouldn't hold a grudge that I had caught them skipping. It's their own fucking fault for getting caught. Fuck them for attacking an innocent council member. You're right, but I wish I had done things differently. Thinking about it over and over again won't change the past. I don't like the thought of you getting hurt and I wish also that I had just fucking knocked them out when I had the chance. Katsuki was starting to get emotional as Izuku was. Damn feelings for messing with him. Kaken, I'm sorry for getting here and thank you for looking out for me. Whatever. Izuku opened her arms to him and he reluctantly wrapped his own arms around her. She still had the awful hospital smell to her, but her hair was still pretty soft. I really do like you, Kaken. That came out of nowhere. Just kinda felt like saying it. He blushed at her just blurting out her feelings. Damn it, he should be used to this by now, but they've been so busy with school. Thanks. Do you want more apples? Yes please. He sat back down to peel some more and noticed her eyeing him, gears turning in her head. What? Feed me an apple. I'm tired. Hi. Huh. His face became redder at that demand. He hesitantly grabbed her fork and stabbed an apple rabbit. With slightly shaky hands that he would deny later, he brought the apple to her mouth. She giggled at how nervous he was and took a bite of the apple. Today was less boring than how it started. A star is born when atoms of light elements are squeezed under enough pressure to undergo fusion. By Richard Brill. Move out the way, you stupid fuck. A blonde woman yells, honking her horn and sticking her middle finger to the driver in front of her. She wears a navy blue business suit with black heels. Damn it mom. Chill the fuck out. It's just a bit of shitty traffic. Her male copy sits right next to her, his unruly blonde hair sticking up everywhere and his uniform a sloppy mess. He wears an orange sweater wide open to show his button up and tucked and the top buttons loose with no tie. His pants are sagging and bunching up at his black boots. Don't you talk back to me, Katsuki. Fix your uniform. 
It's so sloppy. Don't tell me what to do, old hag. Respect your elders. No, me and Izuku could have walked to school. You're going to make her walk the way in crutches. I taught you better. I can carry her. While the screaming match kept going, Izuku was sweating bullets. Her boyfriend and her in-law were not helping the nervousness in her stomach. She hoped she didn't mess up on her first day. She wore a gray tie and a matching green sweater with a striped design on it with bright red shoes. She had heard his school was pretty lax with the uniforms, but she didn't want to overstep too much. She saw only the older kids walking wearing the traditional gray blazer and red tie. A lot of the freshmen wore similar outfits to her and Katsuki, a very colorful bunch. After Miss Bakugu dropped them off, they were able to go to their class but... Deku, why are you wearing our uniform at our school? Achako questioned, completely stunned that Bakugu's infamous girlfriend was at their school. What happened to your leg? Do you require assistance to get to class? Ida offered, extending his arm and ready to assist his new classmate. Bakugu glared in their direction, but Ida was completely oblivious to it and Achako chose to ignore it as always. Did Bakugu do this to your leg? I will protect you, Achako proclaimed, glaring back at Bakugu. I didn't do this. Ida, Achako, nice to see you two again. Some classmates of mine did this so I decided to transfer here. She explained, a little nervous under all the attention. I welcome you to UA and will be here to help with anything you need. Ida bowed. Me too. I'll lend you my notes of things you need. Thank you, you too. I'm really grateful for this warm welcome. Well, well what's Deku doing here? Everyone turned around to face Kaminari and Kirishima, Bakugu's two best friends. Kachin, you didn't tell me you were bringing your girlfriend over today. I would have prepared something. Kaminari teased, winking in Izuku's direction, making her blush. Nice to see you again, Miss Katsuki's girlfriend. I'm Kirishima Aijiru, the Kubro's best friend since the beginning of high school. Huh, when did I ever say that? Katsuki shouted, annoyed at all the extras gathering around him and his girlfriend. It's just an instinct. We were destined to be best friends, Kirishima declared, blinding everyone with his radiance and happy personality on such a gloomy Monday. That's no way to treat us, Kachin. Who else would want to be your friend anyway? Kaminari teased, giggling as Katsuki went for a swipe at him. Plenty of people want to be my friend, Katsuki shouted. Everyone knew he was just lying to himself though. The bell rang loud and the group decided to split up for the time being, agreeing to meet up for lunch later on to celebrate their new classmate. Izuku's nerves hadn't settled down at all. She didn't want to go to class yet and didn't know how to react to being in this new school on such short notice. Izuku, are you all right? You're way too white. Katsuki asked, concerned about the paleness on her face. I I I do don't want to go to class. She hastily whispered the last part. Okay, that was a surprising response to Izuku. Her nagging boyfriend, who has never missed a day of school since he was young, agreed with her. She felt guilty for dragging him down with her, but she really cannot stand to be alone right now. Wanna hide out in the closet? What? 